Cataphracts is the play. Cataphracts is the play, and there's the castle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second game of the week. This is going to be a matchup between Nikov and Land. In the bottom, we have Land. Nope, we have Nikov playing as the Byzantines. In the top, we have Land playing as the Mayans. Really love this matchup. I've seen Byzantines and Mayans quite a few times. Mayans are like that S-tier civilization. Really great civilization on a lot of maps. Uh, and how can you argue with their bonuses? I look at the wrong player, of course. How can you argue with their bonuses? Great economy bonus starting with one extra villager. That's great right off the, right off the bat. As if that wasn't strong enough. All their resources last 15% longer, so they get 15% more sheep. Their wood lines last longer. They get 15% more gold and stone. And all of that's great. Their boars are 15%. Uh, they have 15% more boar. So great economy. They also have access to one of the strongest units in the game. General units. The Eagle Warrior. One of the strongest unique units. The Plumed Archer. And the most common unit. The Archer and the Crossbow. Are all cheaper for the Mayans. So all great bonuses. And they wall cheaper. So how do you argue with that? Most civilizations can't stack up to the Mayans. But the Byzantines might be one of them. The Byzantines are a pretty... They're a pretty balanced civilization, let's put it that way. They have some strengths, they have some weaknesses. Um, I did do a like a strategy guide on the Byzantines. I always point that out because I really love that video uh, on my channel. You can always check out my channel at any time. There's my plug. But uh, the Byzantines have a pretty decent time against the Mayans, actually. Something about their Civ matchup. Maybe it's that their Skirmishers are cheaper. Maybe it's that their Cataphracts can handle the Eagle Warriors of the Mayans. Maybe it's the Hand Cannons um, can be built faster since the Byzantines advanced the Imperial Age faster. Because the, their Imperial Age is cheaper. Who knows, maybe it's the Town Watch upgrade or the Building HP upgrade. But the Byzantines, for whatever reason, seem to handle the Mayans pretty okay. I'm not going to say they have an advantage because the Mayans are so strong. But they should have a good shot. So I really would uh, hope this game illustrates that. And let's take a look at the map as well, because that's also important. Nikov can wall here, wall there, and the only problem area, you can wall here, only problem area of his map is going to be walling here, because that's going to be a big wall if he chooses to complete it. That could be a problem. Interestingly, have the golden and uh, berry bush here. I think this map looks more like uh, Green Arabia than it does a standard Arabia kind of map. Because uh, there's so much uh, wood lines and that kind of thing. Oh, definitely a uh, very unusual kind of Arabia map from what I've seen. Taking a look at Land's map. Land has his gold in a very odd position. I'm not sure where you can, you can have to place a, lump, uh, a mining camp there. But uh, with the hill it makes it very awkward. What? What? Most of the stuff that I cast in the Dark Age is pretty automatic. Uh, but that said, let's uh, increase the speed just a little bit. But... Yeah, there's not going to be... Oh, there it is! Oh, shoot! Oh, there it is! Oh, my God! <laughs> I thought the uh, I thought he didn't build a lumber camp this game. Oh, there's one thing I have to do. Let me, uh, let me alt tap. There's one thing you have to do. You have to turn the Fog of War off. Otherwise, things render like that. that. That is the reason for that. Okay. The, uh, the lumber camp was invisible for a second. Okay, I thought it wasn't built. Man, I thought we were going to see something very interesting here, but no, it's just a uh, small bug with Capture Age. Alright, here comes the barracks for Lan. Looks like we're going to see a Dark Age rush or a Men at Arms rush. Time? Where's the time? Okay, so this is going to be a Men at Arms rush, probably. Nikov going to go for a fast feudal, and he is going to go for the patented one of my favorite strategies in all of Age of Empires is the Byzantines forward. It is incredible. Unfortunately, we don't see a lot of forwards anymore in Age of Empires due to the way the meta has shifted. It's favored men-at-arms. Men-at-arms and towers, uh, which counters the strategy pretty heavily. But this is going to be good. Nikov is going to go for the Byzantine forward. Uh, if you like forwards, by the way, watch the player Black Mamba. I have a few... Um, I have one game on my channel. One game with this player, but he loves to forward all the time, even in today's meta. And this is going to be great. We're going to see two archery ranges, or maybe one, from Nikov coming up. He is up on 
an extremely early time, 19 pop. I never forward off that time, but uh, times have changed. I'm gonna build that archery range right away. And he's gonna build skirmishers. And the great thing about a forward is you're able to pressure your opponent. And the best way to counter a forward is usually with skirmishers of your own. Byzantines, of course, get, get cheaper skirmishers and spearmen. The other best way to counter a forward is with men-at-arms. And that men-at-arms upgrade is not in quite yet. But here it comes. And this is... This is high stakes, man. This can go either way. And it's going to go either way um, in a hurry. And so far, five villagers versus four villagers. This is not going to be a win for Nikov. I would abandon in that tower. Let's see if it gets up. Going up pretty fast, actually. And I would have abandoned that tower. You're going to lose a villager for it. Here we go. Well, the tower is up. Some of these villagers are pretty weak. I don't think that was worth it, to be quite honest. I thought I should have abandoned that one. Got to be careful here. Don't want to go into the town center. But mission might already be accomplished, accomplished for Nikov. He's taken away the main gold of land. And unless Lan is going to add some Eagle Warriors or some more men at arms, this uh, this mass of skirmishers and spearmen is only going to get scarier and scarier. Actually, Lan does have a gold in the back, so that is not good for Nikov. Fletcher coming in right away for Nikov. That'll make sure the skirmishers can handle the uh, men at arms. I do worry about Eagle Warrior for the uh, for the Mayans though. And that's an okay fight for either player. No more men-at-arms for land. What is land doing right now? Where's his resources going into? He built the two mining camps. I assume that's it. Whereas Nikov is, is only building his first mining camp now. Gonna build some farms in the back. Maybe this tower threatens a few of them. And no berries for land. That's also important. So that tower did deny the berries, at least temporarily. And I think land's economy is hurting because of that. I don't see any other military units, any other military buildings from land. Because of this investment into the mill, the two mining camps, and then having to build more farms. Because the berries have not been, uh, been utilized. And Nikov is actually going to mine that gold. So I think mission accomplished for, for Nikov. I don't see him getting inside these walls any longer. I think if you're either player, get your eco upgrades, farm up, and head to the castle age. And Nekov is going to mine a little bit of stone, because I'm sure he wants a tower on this gold. These villagers are very weak. Help solidify that position. Maybe a tower here would be great, too. So stone is definitely the way to go for Nikov. As far as the economy goes, we're on about even villager numbers. Both players did get their Bidax upgrades. Nikov's now getting his horse collar upgrade. Like a tower. Tower from land. I think that's a good tower. Might be a good tower. I think so. It'll keep these archers out. I'm gonna try to force drop that. And that village is pretty weak. But she's gonna get away. A pretty good tower for land if you want to protect this area. However, the tower is coming up from Nikov in this perfect position. And Lan has enough stone for a counter tower. So he should be okay. I don't think he has town watch. Uh, let's see if I can do this. There we go. There's his line of sight. So we can't see this. This will be a proper defense. Once again, if I was Nikov, I would abandon this tower. Maybe build it a little further back. But so far, Nikov has played this game exactly like you'd like to play it. This is the problem, however. Mines are so strong. In part because of the access to this Eagle Warrior upgrade. I think Eagles should destroy all trash. And look at this from Nikov. Gonna try to chop his way through. Let's go back to the Fog of War. Lan can't see this right now. What the hell? Maybe place some Palisades there? I don't know. I don't know why that was visible. But yeah, gonna place the gate there. And actually, once again, I think I was wrong about these two towers. Uh, this tower's not great because it will go down, but it does deny the wood line temporarily. And... At this point, land is hurting a lot for wood. 
So he's going to have to build another lumber camp back there. So Nikov's done the eco damage. I uh, have to mention that Nikov does have wheelbearer and horse collar, but here comes two eagles into the base. I don't think two eagles can do a lot of damage and should have waited for the third eagle. Unfortunately, they build so slowly. Just one more piece of palisade needed, at least in this area. So there's that palisade. Going to have to wall here as well. And actually, the eagles are trapped in. Look at this kind of box that Nikov has created. What a great play. Oh, man. That is huge. Nikov is in such a strong position. The Byzantines are absolutely dominating. Here comes a market. Both players are about ready to click up to the castle age. And somehow these units got in. How did, th how did that happen? And I think these spearmen might be able to uh, poke these eagles enough to uh, be able to... Uh, be able to do this yes with capture age you'll be seeing capture age from now on as long as it remains uh free to use both players going into the castle age finally horse collar for land and this game of course is nowhere close to being over land actually having the score lead lions are so strong because this whole time, remember, Lan has been benefiting from uh, two eco bonuses. Having that extra villager early on, and then all the resources lasting longer. Whereas Nikov has benefited from zero eco bonuses. So, eco bonuses are king in 1 versus 1 Arabia. And this is kind of interesting. We all know Lan is going to keep going eagles because it's worked out so uh, pretty well for him. Question is, does Nikov keep going with this uh, army composition? The skirmishers make no sense. So, gotta discontinue those. And why would you go spearmen against eagles? And against a civilization that can't make knights. So that makes no sense. So what is Nikov gonna do? Shit, man, he's gonna go for cataphracts. Oh my gosh. I don't know if that was intentional. Sometimes you take too much stone if you're mining stone already, but... Cataphracts is the play! Cataphrax is the play, and there's the castle. And what was the weakness of Nikov's map? Remember, it was this area, and that castle is going to go in this area. This could be stonewalled later on. But yeah, Cataphrax, and if Lan wants to transition to... Well, it looks like he might transition to Plumed Archers. That would be strong against Cataphrax. But as of this moment, Nikov is one step ahead. That's okay, you can lose those spearmen. Not a big deal. Here comes a few Cataphrax. Yeah, Cataphract hype. We don't see this often. This is very rare. It's very rare to see Cataphracts in 1 versus 1 Arabia. And even rarer to see them be effective. Uh, but this might be a situation where they're effective. And yeah, two counters to the Cataphract. One is going to be Monks, two is going to be Plumed Archers. Land is not ready to build that castle yet, so he's going to go with the Monastery. So got to be careful. Don't want to lose these. Cataphracts are very expensive. So monks will be very effective. But this is where the skirmishers can still play a role. The skirmishers still can kill the monks. And actually, actually Nikov might try to take down this monastery before a monk is able to get a conversion. He's got the skirmishers here to weaken up the monks if they pop out. Certainly the eagles are not going to want to engage. Or are they? No, there's no way. Eagle scouts against cataphracts? There's no way. I think both players know how valuable these skirmishers are right now. So those eagles wanted to get the skirmishers. But yeah, this monastery almost down to half health. I think Nikov should just keep pummeling away at that. Make land, rebuild it. There comes the monk. Skirmishers are going to whittle it down a little bit. But he's going to get away. I would just keep, just take that thing down, man. You really want that down. And Nikov going back doesn't want to take the risk. I'm a little surprised. Just keep the skirmishers there. Keep the cataphracts right there. Land on the defensive, but he's gearing up for a castle. Right now, villager count is even. I think Land has the extra town center. Just by looking at the mini-map. Yeah, definitely has the extra town. Oh, no, he doesn't. They're clumped up together. Three town centers right there. 
Five villagers coming forward for Nikov. I think. Hmm. What do you do? Oh, Nikov has enough stone for another castle. Oh, here we go. Big moment. Big moment. Nikov wants to keep this position. Lan wants to take his gold back over. Lan is running out of this main gold. This is a big point in this game. Where are the cataphracts? Where are the cataphracts? Come back. Come back. Here's those monks. I think... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought Nikov was going to lose that. Nikov is half a second too late. Maybe not half a second, but he's, uh, he's a little bit too late. But what you can do as Nikov is you can still... Maybe you could build the castle right there. Oh, man. There's a lot of HP on those cataphracts. One is going to get converted. Nikov's lost a lot of momentum. He's up to the Imperial Age. If you could just get a trebuchet onto this castle and have it protected, that might be the game. That's definitely the game, actually. That's hard. This castle won't protect the trebuchet. Actually, that's a market. My bad. Yeah, all about the timings. That could have been a little bit better timing for Nikov. Now Land's still in this game. Land gets back his gold. We could see also plumed archers to counter the cataphracts. I guess that's why we see elite skirmisher. Nikov still has this castle. Where is he going to place this castle? He needs to take down the castles in the mines. I would... You have the army. You just don't have the army. You don't have the army to place the castle where you want it. You could place a defensive castle right there. You could place it here. Or here. I'm going to place it there in the middle so you can get a little bit closer to the castles of land. Land will have a hill advantage. If this comes down to a trap war. This could be a good trade. Cataphracts with plus one armor only. No husbandry. But they're not going to catch up to these units too quickly. All about these monks. This is a close game. I don't know. I don't know. Land's got his army composition going. He has the hills. We have a six villager advantage for Nikov. That's not that much. Should see two trebuchets coming out right away. Eagles are going to go back. Nice play from Nikov if he's going to collect some of these relics. I see he already has one in there. He has two. He's going to have three. Wow. That's very much needed. He needs to take every bonus he can against the Mayans. And let's see. Conscription coming in first. I disagree with that. Where's the trebuchet? Where's the trebuchet, man? You need a trebuchet. Oh, that's great. Going to put up the stone gate there. This castle's a goner. This castle's a goner, especially without any trebuchets. What are you doing, land? Build some trebuchets. You have the resources. What are you saving up for? Oh, Gonna save every little bit, bit of resource for Elite Eagle Warrior. Doesn't need the trebuchet, it just needs Elite Eagle Warrior. And that's not gonna work out, because these trebuchets are gonna get walled in. And Nikov is pretty well defended at home. He's got a lot of walls. He needs to finish these. Always finish up your walls. Why are you giving up a castle for free? It's not that the trebuchets are too slow, it's that they're not being built at all. That makes no sense. What about the second castle? Are you going to build trebuchets for the second castle? I guess Nikov is going to try to defend with his army. And yeah, this is a problem. Can't build uh, plumed archers and trebuchets at the same time. Yeah, I, I know. I know hyperkinesia. I know. <laughs> Man. Try casting sometime. Alright, these cataphracts should wreck. But they don't have any armor. They're, they're still very... They're very castle age. They're very castle age ish. But here we go, hand cannons. This is my recommendation usually to Byzantine players is go for the hand cannon over the cataphract. In this case, I think both would be valuable. But definitely need that armor upgrade on the cataphracts. It's the one thing you need. This is not bad for land. Just move forward a little bit, take out some production buildings. That'll be good. 
And I think you have the army to take the castle, though. I would go for the castle. This is a problem. Did Nikov finish off his walls? He didn't. This is just being lazy. How you know eagles are on the field. You have to wall up your map. It's as simple as that. No matter what, no matter what kind of position you're in, you need to wall your map. You need to stone wall there, and you need to stone wall there. It's easy. It'll cost you 100 stone, but it's easy. And things like that can win you games. And I think Lan is going to get a, ma uh, a monster raid. We have 115 villagers now for Nikov. We could say 120. Let's see how many kills Lan is going to get. He's going to get a ton of kills. Take a look here. 54 villagers in this one screen. Unfortunately, the Eagles, they need Iron Casting. Um, iron Casting would make it a lot easier to kill the villagers. That 11 attack is magic for villagers. And attack is weak. And look at all these villagers. They can't fit in there. Cataphracts are going to come back. Maybe they can clean up the Eagles. Get something good out of this. But remember, that was at 120. Now it's at 95. Trebuchets are fourth. The Cataphracts are not here to defend. Let's see if the hand cannons can do the job. It's a lot of hand cannons. But we have two rams. We need the cataphracts to clean up the rams. Don't lose the cataphracts. Do not lose them. Hand cannon's gonna go to work. There's 17 hand cannons. Two trebuchets still remaining. Castle goes down for land. Land's selling a ton of resources because he can't get his gold. Everything is gonna get cleaned up. Land cleaned that up. But now land has no more castles. And I just, I love being able to check the minimap and not having to look at a statistic for that. That is great. So Nikov took some heavy losses. Lost maybe 30 villagers. Assuming he was building villagers this whole time. Lost 30 villagers, lost a lot of army. Nikov, um, Lan also lost some army. Lost his castle. And I like Nikov's position. I just don't lose the hand cannons. I think now you can play the long game against the Mayans. I think you could win it there. Because you have two castles already. You have a third coming up. The Mayans have no castles. You could still pressure this gold. Play the long game if you're Nikov. Maybe keep adding Cataphracts. And actually though. Actually there is nothing to counter Cataphracts. The counter was Plumed Archers. Halbs don't really work too well. Land is actually probably going to go into Arbalest. And if you're Nikov, just take over map control, take over the extra resources, place town centers, place castles, whatever you have to do, and just keep pressuring this area. There's only two things you have to do. It's pretty simple. Don't need to raid in a million places. The Byzantines aren't good at that anyway. Just need to focus on two areas. The extra resources, keeping your base safe, and pushing on the front. And these hand cannons are so good. So good when you don't have to worry about archers. And now's the time. If Nikov can place a trebuchet on this hill, look at all the production buildings that'll go down. Over chop where? Don't see the over chop. That's dicey. Remember again, Nikov having three relics. Yeah, there you go. Three relics. That is going to help a lot. And if you're land, I know it's risky, but you got to saturate that gold. If the army comes in, so be it. Run your villagers back, but you got to saturate that gold. Because you're hurting for gold. That's not enough villagers on gold. Gonna go out to this one. Nico not doing a great job securing the extra resources. Does have a castle on the right side. That's kind of a whatever castle. Why don't you take over that gold? I know you don't need it, but come on. Certainly your opponent needs it. Oh, what blue raided a while ago. My bad. Alright, Nikov not being aggressive pretty much at all. Not taking over the extra resources. Still has his map open. I'm not liking these late game plays from Nikov. Look at Land. He's been massing up his army. Has had access to all these three golds. Which are allowing him to build a decent army. 
and these cataphracts? They have the armor, at least. But I think if you nick up, no point in fighting up this hill. I think Land's army is now too big. Just focus on the extra resources. This will win you the game. Not right now, but it'll win you the game late game. Castle coming up on the left. Certainly, Nikov has enough castles now. This stone might be important, too. Pretty sure Land's out of stone. I don't see any stone left. So, yeah, this stone is very important. I think that might be Land's second stone. <laughs> Thanks, Lidicor. Lidicor bot. Appreciate it. Nikov getting foraging. This is a great game, though. Really enjoying this one. I don't know if Nikov can hold. Need to deny those extra resources. Land expanding to the left, expanding to the right. Who has more map control this game? It might be Land. Now Nikov's coming over. He's got the big upgrade. The big upgrade is Elite Cataphract. That's huge. That is one of the most expensive technologies in the game. And the reason it's that way is because once you get all the upgrades on the Cataphracts, there aren't a whole lot of units that counter them. Halbs don't counter them. Camels don't counter them. Archers do okay. Sure, they have a little less pierced armor, but come on, it's 150 HP. And not that many Arbalests. These Cataphracts might be able to smash the Skirmishers. This is where those castles come in handy. Those eagles are not going to want to rate that gold. You can say, well, what is this from Nikov? No, wood is not important. Get, get the gold. At least he did rate up there. Villager count 140 to 120. Logistica, another extremely expensive upgrade. These cataphracts are now fully upgraded. And they're being built from four castles. If you're a Byzantine's player and you've got fully upgraded ca cataphracts being built from four castles and you got 140 villagers, I don't know how often you lose those kinds of games. Let's see if this is going to be one of them. Big army from Lan. It's a big army, but just the quality of cataphracts. The question is, do you have enough? Do you have enough cataphracts right now being built from four castles? Wording's just being made. These are ultra strong castles. I would say wait for the rams to come in. These castles are so strong. Let the rams come in. Let the army come in under the castle fire and then take a fight. But it might not be necessary. I think bide your time if you nick off. The more time you have, the more cataphracts you can make. This is a superior unit. You're almost a 200 population. What's the relic count for each? Uh, I can actually use... Four castles, okay. Uh, four relics for Nikov and one for land. There we go. That is so convenient. And actually though, Nikov's gonna take this hill. Here comes those rams. Even though they're siege rams, these castles are not gonna go down quickly. This is 8,000 HP. Mines, of course, don't get siege engineers. Give it some time. I think lure land in. Even if you lose a castle, it's not a big deal. Because I think you, if you clean up the army, that's it. That's the game. If you lose a castle, it's not the game. And I... Get the castle attack the Arbalest. The hand cannons are kind of over here on the left. Uh, not a good position for Nikov. Half of his army is not attacking. Castle, of course, I think will stay up. It's going to be close. Might go down. It's going to stay up. For now. And I think that timing was good for Nikov, but half of his army was over here. Oh my god. What are you doing with the hand cannons? Use them! Oh man. Look at the map control for Lan. How do you give up this map control? And I say give up because Nikov definitely gave this up. He had the army at one point and didn't go for these extra resources. And now look at this. Land building military production buildings at every corner of the map. Hate to say it, but kind of a throw. And I'm a little disappointed because 
we do see, again, how often do you lose a game when you're at 140 villagers with four castles with all the elite cataphract upgrades? Doesn't happen often. But that said, you know, Nikov still might not lose it. He's got the higher quality army for sure. But this really worries me, this map control. Luckily, Nikov going with Light Cavalry, that'll help him to reestablish map control. Uh, Nikov with banks and just muddy vaults of resources. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, Liverpool. I wouldn't say that, because you're at 200 population, and you've got a bank of resources. You start making skirmishers, you're going to lose the game. That's a great late game option, but if you've got 1,500 gold and you're at 200 pop and you're being pushed, uh, now is not the time to conserve resources. Uh, hand cannon's the stronger overall option. You gotta go for that. But Husser is done. That's a big upgrade. And you know what I'm missing? You know what I'm missing from Nikov's army? I'm missing Ram. We saw Siege Ram on Siege Ram action. That would be a big boost for Nikov, I think. So Nikov's got to somehow clean this up. If he had Ram, would be able to clean this up easy. Super easy. Be able to clean up this left side. Just cataphracts here, cataphracts here, some Siege Rams. That would clean that up. And on the front, you're doing okay. Uh, rely on the strength of your castles in the front. And what's great is that Land can't even build a trebuchet. He doesn't have a castle. So, uh, Nikov, only way he's going to lose that castle is if Siege Rams come in. And there we go. There's that Siege Ram upgrade for Nikov. Close game. Close game. Games are never this close in this late game. But this is a good one. Yep, that could be a big rating for us. And now the Siege Rams can clean things up. All right. All right, this looks a little dicey. As long as the siege rams go down, then uh, Nikov will be good. But uh, all the hussars are dying. A lot of siege rams coming in. We have 1,000 HP left. All right, you don't want to lose that castle. Going to bring the villagers in. Mostly skirmisher. Yeah, got to bring these back. Got to take out the siege rams. Got seven siege rams. Oh boy, gonna be close. I don't see the army here. I just don't see the army for Nikov. Cataphracts have to build faster. The army, the castle's going down. Now Nikov's running low on gold. He's spent up all his gold. And the castle went down. This might be a game changer for Lan. Lan getting heavily raided? Not really. This kind of this area is kind of going down. This area is kind of going down. That's big for Nikov getting some extra gold. The losing that castle wasn't the game, but if it's a sign of things to come, then it's a good sign for Lan. Only that castle did its role, but Lan getting on top of that gold really heavily. If Lan can get a castle, it'll help uh, solidify position, prevent raids, can get some trebuchets out. Could see obsidian arrows, of course. I would, I would, I would ram down that binding camp. That's just me. This is not bad. I mean, Nikov's got the cheaper trash late game. These rams are doing work. Gotta protect them though. Guilds coming in. So this area is done. Somehow Land's still taking this. You have Husser. If, if you're Nikov and you have a Husser, why aren't, aren't you raiding that gold? These units have been sitting here for the last five minutes. Yeah, I agree, Liverpool. I, I don't think he re, um, used those hand cannons uh, pretty well earlier in the game. That was a... Uh, that fight could have been a lot better when that castle was being attacked and the hand cans were over there. That was a big changing point in this game. We have a few rams out. How much gold is left on the map? Only 1,800. That's nothing at all. This is not bad. Nikov has re-established map control. 
At least on the sides, not really in the middle. But on the plus side, it's not like Land can raid Nikov. Uh, the only raiding unit that Land would have would have been Plumed Archers or Eagles, and Land can't make either. So sure, you have this big mess kind of in the middle of the map, but what is it really doing? Not a whole lot. Here's that castle for Land. That can be deadly. And there you go, finally, Nikov raiding a little bit on the right. So, should clean that up. How, how much gold is left here? So, there's almost no gold there, so it's got to be 1,500 gold there. That could be the game. Gonna build a siege workshop there. 1,500 gold will afford you a lot of siege rams. And I think, I think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my prediction out there. I think that Nikov wins this. Uh, Nikov, I think, has the superior army composition. Skirmishers and pikemen will be cheaper. Husser is a strong unit against Mesosivs. These are not the best Hussars in the world, but they're still something. And uh, and Nikov has the map control. And 1,500 extra gold to work with. Not to mention those four relics, of course. Those relics doing work. So I'm going to put my guess out there. I think that Nikov is going to win this. And, man, this was a close game. Crop rotation is usually done pretty late because it's a little bit expensive. But it's a good upgrade late game. Very good. Man, what a game. What a game. Back and forth. Didn't know who was going to win it. Some crazy strategies from both players. Nikov going with that forward uh, early in the game. Great to see that be effective. Eventually, Nikov did lose the, uh, did lose the map control. And uh, eventually, Land did take over the middle of the map, but what did he do with it? Nothing really. Can't raid with it. Lost the edges of the map because it was so focused on the middle. And those edges had a lot of extra resources. I wish both players focused on that a little bit more of this game. But oh well. I think this is going to be a win for Nikon. Down goes that castle. That castle is useless. Didn't even get obsidian arrows. What's happening on the left? Nothing's happening on the left. Go to 25 stone left there. Enough for a castle if you're Nikov. Nikov gonna mine that, and now he's gonna raid with the Husser. And he's got a siege ram busting this open. Land is forced here anyway because he's out of wood. And this is looking good. This has to be GG. Has to be GG. 100%. No comebacks incoming. What's happening on the top in land's base? Those holes. Those are holes. Yeah, those are holes. It's a hole now. That should be a big raid. 20 more villagers for Nikov. Byzantine's late game army at this point is superior. And I just don't I don't see any way Lance gonna be able to take this over. Looks like 60% of the map belongs to Nikov. All the important extra resources, those extra relics. And Nikov might have a little bit of difficulty going up this hill because it is a hill. So I think Land can definitely stall for some time. Just hug the hill and keep Pikeman over here. But this is not a winning condition for this game. So if you're going to go up that hill, I think Nikov just save your gold. Build as many siege ramps as you can. Maybe add some skirmishes to the right side there. the skirmisher only. Why not? If you're the Byzantines and you're against Mezzo, why not? Why not go skirmisher only? I am going to speed this game up for you guys. And for myself. Any rating here? Just a little bit. But if I think this game is going to go the other way, then I'm going to slow it down. 
But, uh... Oh, I don't know, actually. The populations are not at 200. 160 for Nikov, 170 for Lan. Lan has more pop. So Nikov's got to step up his production a bit, add some more production buildings. This is nice, though. These huts are just doing work, man. Not enough pipemen. Pipemen are not even... They're not even that good against Husser. I mean, think about it. Husser's a tier 3 upgrade, an Imperial upgrade. Pikeman's Castle Age, of course. And there's GG. What a game. One of my favorite games uh, that I've cast in a long time. Great game. Man, I hope you enjoyed it, too. Where can I download the Skirms Nothing map? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Was this played on his stream? I have no clue. You have to ask him yourself. Army Count's still in favor, Lan, yeah. Oh man, excellent game. Wow, really good one. Really good. I'm, I'm glad we got to illustrate that point that I mentioned earlier. The Byzantines, they have an okay time against the Mayans. And we saw the reason why. Cataphracts, uh, cheaper skirmishers was big. Uh, that early in advanced Imperial Age was big. The stronger castles could have even helped out. Um, helped out quite a bit. Really, really good matchup. Hope you enjoyed it.